Hi, I'm Kaylin Asher, a Clarity Coach for Women Entrepreneurs and the host of the Clarity Confessions. And this is the place to be to hear the wisdom and business secrets from top entrepreneurs. And today we are so lucky to be uh, visited by Stacy Ferreira. Stacy is the co-founder of Get Forge and Two Billion Under Twenty, which helps millennials set goals and achieve their dreams. She also co-founded My Social Cloud, which was acquired by Reputation.com in 2013. She's a 2015 Thiel Fellow, and she's the co-author of the book Two Billion Under Twenty: How Millennials Are Breaking Down Age Barriers and Changing the World. Needless to say, this gal has accomplished quite a bit in her 20 odd years. And I am so delighted to have her on the show today. Thanks for being here, Stacey. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. I'm really excited to, to talk to you today. First, I'd love to just hear a little bit more about how you got started on this entrepreneurial path that you're on. Definitely. So I got started, I grew up in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I had a brother who was two years older than me. Uh, the, two of the, the two of us kind of played video games growing up. My dad worked at IBM and brought home a computer when we were young and um, just started playing around. And one day the two of us just got to talking and we said, you know, this is really cool. Um, can we go out and build our own video game? So we started teaching ourselves how to program in, in middle school and high school. And then once I turned 18, um, and graduated high school, my brother and I went to our parents and said, we want to go take take what we've learned and uh, we want to go start a business. And my parents said, cool, uh, starting a business is a grown-up activity, so if you want to do that, um, you need to move out of the house and learn how to be financially independent. Um, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my brother and I took kind of all the money that we had saved at the time and we moved to South Central Los Angeles. Um, in California, and started our first business called My Social Cloud, which did using the password storage and auto log again. Um, this was back in 2011. And uh, make a long story short, um, and built that business over the course of two years, and then sold it to Reputation.com in 2013. Um, and then just from there, kind of got the bug. So, um, so now I'm on round two. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, what? I couldn't even imagine if my parents had said, okay, if you want to do that, you're out of the house. I mean, I think that would have scared me right back into the house. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I was going to say, my parents um, have been great supporters, but uh, I think some of that stuff is what makes me who I am today, so I'm appreciative of it. Yeah, definitely, and it obviously served you well, so they, they knew what they were doing when they made that suggestion. So before we dive into our conversation, I always like to do the clarity confession round as kind of an icebreaker. So are you ready for the rapid fire questions? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So first one, is your work aligned with your purpose? Yes. <laughs> so how, what makes you feel most successful in the work that you do? I think it's the, the fact that the work that we're doing impacts millions of lives every day. Um, yeah, so that impact. Yeah. What personal practices or self-care do you make time for regularly? Exercise, the most important thing in my day. I agree. What is the best thing about being an entrepreneur? Getting to really create your own dream. Mm. And what is the worst thing about being an entrepreneur? Probably the stress. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty tough, right? Uh, <laughs> last one. What is one word that you feel sums up your life's purpose at the moment? Oh, boy. I would say work. Mm. A lot of people have a negative spin on that, but yeah, work in the most positive sense. Yeah, that you're in it, that you're doing it, that you're living what you're supposed to be, that you were put on this earth to do. I get it. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to, I have, I should hold this up. This is her lovely book. I mean, how cool is it? You're a published author. At, <laughs> I, I think you're in your early 20s. I'm not sure of the exact age, but that's pretty amazing. Um, so how, tell me how you came up with this concept of 2 billion under 20. Totally. 
so I was 20 years old when my brother and I sold our first company. Um, and at the time, I had just kind of amassed a network of young kids who were going out and starting their own businesses. And those kids uh, became my friends over time. And when we sold the first company, I was like, there are a million other kids out here who are doing awesome things that they just don't get the visibility. And a lot of times, they don't get the support that they need um, to really take their projects further. And so I said, you know, what's a way that we can give a platform to these individuals to really showcase um, their, their life's work and the things that they're passionate about? Mm -hmm. So I teamed up with a friend, um, Jared Kleiner, um, to, to make Two Billion Under 20 a reality where we share 75 short stories of kids from across the globe who are, um, who are really living their dreams. Um, so, and. Yeah. I, I read through a number of these stories. They're so inspiring. Um, it's really amazing to see these kids just, just following their passion and going out there and doing what they love. Are there any particular stories in the book or particular people in the book that have stuck with you after the fact? Yeah, definitely. Um, there's a lot of people in the book. So there's this guy, Sam McLuck, who talks about his experience where growing up he always wanted to go to the Olympics, right? And he talks about his experience of being a young person training to go to the Olympics and then finally going there and what that experience is like um, to kind of have a goal and set that in your mind and then work really hard to get towards it, um, I think is a powerful message. Mm. Um, there's another story in the book that kind of hits home for me, um, this girl by the name of Kristen Power who talks about watching her mom as she's growing up, watching her mom suffer with Huntington's disease. Um, and her mom passed away, and then she turned 18, and she had the decision, or she had the choice of deciding if she wanted to go get tested to see if she had the same uh, genes as her mom mm. um, in, in that category. And that's kind of a touching story because she, she tells about her, her journey going through that, and it's one of those things where um, a lot of times we, we meet people and uh, it's, it's hard to see what happens behind closed doors or the yeah. things that are really affecting people's lives um, that make them a part of who they are. So I think um, that was a really powerful story too. Hmm. So I can imagine There's that a lot of positive ones too though. Um, I was going to say. No, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say that there are other stories of this girl, uh, Paige Mackenzie, who's a good friend of mine, who writes about um, starting her own YouTube channel and, and growing her YouTube channel and then deciding, hey, you know, I'm making a living doing this, so I'm not going to go to college and I'm just going to keep pursuing my passion of making videos. Um, so there's a lot of cool stories in the book. It really, gives, it really gives a good snapshot of our generation. I think it's so amazing that you set out to compile all these different stories. I mean, I find in my own life one of the most motivating, inspiring things that I can do for myself is just read other people's stories, read other people's experiences and, re and realize that I'm not alone on this entrepreneurial path because there's a lot of challenges that come up and a lot of obstacles that arise. And is there any, any one thing that, that was a really big obstacle for you on this, on this path of putting to the book together or just on your entrepreneurial journey in, in general? Yeah, you know, I think it, it's a good question. Um, there are a lot of things, as as probably everyone who's watching this knows, there are a lot of things that throughout um, throughout the days or weeks, there are a lot of just little hurdles to get over. Um, a lot of times, there's not one thing that's that's a showstopper. Um, it's a lot of times a lot of little things that are that are the tough things to you know every day just keep pushing forward. Um, that's certainly been my experience. So there's not like one glaring thing that that I can really point out, but just a lot of little things. Um, it takes perseverance. Yeah, very much so. And something that that I've noticed on my journey is that sometimes it's good not knowing all the obstacles heading into something, having that little bit of naivete about it, and thinking, oh, I'm, I have this big vision, I'm just going for it. It's helpful in the long run to to not know all those little obstacles that are going to creep up along the way, and to just kind of lead with your heart and then figure it out with your head when it arrives. Definitely. Yeah. So, what are you most proud of in in your life in your business at at this point? Definitely. Um, I would honestly say my team. Uh, there's there's five of us that are working on on my next business, and um, I'm I'm really I'm proud of of I guess 
myself for, for, for being able to bring us all together and, and work together, but I'm proud of them and the work that they do every day. Um, I wouldn't be here without them, and they wouldn't all be where they are without each other, so I'm proud of, um, I'm proud of the team. And even though you're so young, you've built a number of businesses. You you have quite you've probably accumulated quite a bit of business savvy. Is there a piece of advice that you heard perhaps, or that you could offer at this point to entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs to to kind of help them persevere? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say the biggest piece of advice that I received a while back. Um, I asked the question, and a lot of people ask me the question now, of how do you balance work and life? Um, and I got the advice a while back where someone said, um, only work on projects that are worth unbalancing your life for. Hmm. Um, and that was something that really hit me, and I was like, yeah, that totally makes sense. Like, if you're not willing to give it your all, and you're not willing to completely unbalance your life for it, um, then why do it? Because we have limited time here, so make sure that you pick something that you're super passionate about, something that you can't stop thinking about and something that's truly worth unbalancing your life for. Hmm. I love that. I love that concept. I've, I've not heard anything to that, to that effect either. I mean, it, that's a piece of advice I think is really important because entrepreneurs go into it and they think, oh, I'm doing this for myself. I'll achieve work-life balance. And, and there is something to that, that you can create your schedule. But sometimes it's about finding the harmony between your personal life and your professional life, not necessarily a balance. You know, it, there's going to be times when, when work takes over and projects take over, but it's because you allow them to and you want them to. So I, I really like that, thinking of it from that way. And it makes you feel not so, so guilty or so bad if you are letting work kind of creep into other areas of your life. But if it's, if, if it's what you're meant to be doing and you're so passionate about, then that's okay once in a while to let that happen. Totally, 100%. Yeah. So I'd love to just hear from you because it seems like you have, I mean, you're at the very beginning of your entrepreneurial journey for sure. So what does, what does the future hold for you? Like what is, where, where do you think you'll be in, in five years? Definitely. So I guess in my bio, you read that I'm working on a new company called mm -hmm. Forge. Um, and what we're doing with that is basically we're, we're building an app where uh, we're partnering with retail and quick service restaurants and their managers can come in and put the hours that they want, that they need people to work on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then anyone in the world can sign up and pick what hours they want and go work those hours and get paid for it. Um, cool. And so to me, that's what I, that's what I hope to be doing in the next five, 10, 15 years is allowing people to work more seamlessly and allowing people to make a healthy living by choosing their own hours and choosing where they work. Wow, what a neat vision. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited to see how that comes together. I think that is something that is so needed and, and you see it in little bits and pieces now of, of people really picking and choosing their projects with like Fiverr and you know, Hire My Mom and all these different sites where, where you can kind of articulate what you want to be doing and then pick the time, pick the projects, pick the money and, and kind of piece together your work life. I think So that I think that sounds like an amazing next step in that realm. Totally. Yeah, we're excited about it. We're excited. There's a lot of people, like you said, who are doing the, the whole um, like stay at home or like do stuff online. Um, and we're really looking forward to kind of bringing the same flexible work schedule to, to hourly employees, people who mm -hmm. work at, at the places that we eat, the places that we shop. Um, so, yeah. Really cool idea. So um, I'd love for you to just share where people can find you or keep up with you because it seems like you're, you're, you're working on a lot of stuff now, but I think a lot of viewers would probably be curious about how they can learn a little bit more about you. Definitely. So I'm pretty active on social media, so people can follow me and tweet at me on, on Twitter. And my handle is just at Stacy Ferreira. Um, same thing. I'm on Facebook. Um, if you if you search Stacy for anywhere, you'll probably find me. Um, and my my email is Stacy at StacyFerreira.com. So try and keep it easy for people. If you know my name, you know how to get in touch with me. <laughs> 
That does keep it simple. I try to do the same as well. And for all of you watching, Stacey has a lovely gift. She's going to give a copy of her book, Two Billion Under 20, away to one lucky viewer. So all you have to do to enter is head on over to our private Facebook page and make a comment below the post for this video and share your biggest takeaway, your favorite takeaway from our interview together. So Stacy, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, sharing your story on the Clarity Confessions. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for okay. having me. Of course. Take care. Bye.